If you ever wanted clean, rounded edges right off your CNC, this bit is the answer. In today's video, we're diving deep into the point cutter roundover bit. What it is, when to use it, how to set it up and program it, and we'll cut a real project so you can see exactly what to do and what to avoid. Everything I'll be sharing comes from cutting thousands of products over the last 10 years using this bit. So what is a point cutter roundover bit? Well, just like your traditional roundover bits, it's meant to give an edge, a radius edge to a project. But since it's on a CNC and designed specifically for a CNC, it does not need that bearing right there. And you should never use a bearing on a CNC because bad things happen and things will break. Herein lies the point cutter roundover. So it's a roundover bit that comes to a point, hence the name point cutter roundover. So when and why should you use it? So when would you use a point cutter roundover on a project? Well, this particular project has two different use cases for the point cutter. The first is an outside radius, just like your typical roundover bit can do, right? You put this in a router table, you run the project over it, and it's going to round it over. The second use case, which I actually find a lot more useful in projects, is rounding over edges that a typical roundover bit cannot reach. And the reason most roundover bits cannot reach it is because of that bearing. What you end up having is the bearing hitting and you can't actually round over this edge no matter what you do. So instead of spending hours hand sanding this, you put that point cutter in on your CNC and it's gonna come in and actually clean up and make all of these edges really perfect. So let's talk about the design of the bit, then we'll get to programming. And so why I'm diving so deep into this design process is because this will make using the bit so much easier the rest of your life and the rest of this video so much easier to understand. A point cutter has a very unique problem specific to the bit and that is if you get one point cutter from one manufacturer and one from another, believe it or not, they're going to be a little bit different every single time. So let's talk about that. So right here is the shape, the profile, the form of a point cutter. The one in particular we're gonna be talking about is the quarter inch radius point cutter. So imagine that each of these circles are a half inch in diameter or have a quarter inch radius, hence quarter inch radius point cutter. And whenever you match these two circles up, and if you trace them, you get something that looks like that right there, okay? If you actually put the bit on there, you actually get something that looks like that. And so this right here is your point cutter bit that you're sticking in your CNC that is spinning a round and a round. The problem with this bit right here is this tip. And that tip is very fragile and it likes to break. And so right here, as you can easily see that this tip right here just snaps. If that tip does break, you end up with a non pointy point cutter and manufacturers know this and they know that that tip is very, very fragile and is more likely to break. So what manufacturers will do will actually purposely dull the tip of that point cutter, therefore breaking it for you. But each manufacturer will dole it at different like levels. And so let me show you two different bits. This one is mine. This one is from a different manufacturer. See how much more pointy his bit is versus ours. Our particular bits, I actually shaved down to about like this because after years and years of using them in my manufacturing shop, bits like this that try to come to that fine point always, always, always break just like that and then it messes up way too much stuff. So what you end up getting, instead of being able to go down to five inches, they shave this part down like that, and really you have to go down some other number. Usually this ranges between 0.2 inches to 0.17 inches is all the working space you get. Now remember, it's still a quarter inch radius bit on the width, but it's no longer on the depth because of that tip. The problem 
that you're going to have if you just typically think that you can put that bit in, go down, and you're going to have this nice radius edge. What you end up having is a dulled bit, once again, whether it's mine or another manufacturer's, and you end up getting this little lip right here, and it goes down too deep because you told it to go down a quarter inch, and it's really only can go down 0.18. So a quarter inch is a little bit deeper, and therefore you actually end up getting this radius edge and not this radius edge right here. That design process is going to prevent you from getting bad edges like this and going to help you get good edges like this. Now, for our particular point cutter roundover from CIC Workshop, we've doled it down to 0.177 inches from here to here, because after using a couple hundred of these in our manufacturing shop, our bit always would break to around 0.18, and so we doled it down to 0.177. So if you understand that concept, understand that it's made with diameter bits, tips break, you automatically dole the tips down, and that leads to different programming problems from different manufacturers. So let's hop on over to the program so I can show you exactly how to set it up, and then we'll run some real life projects to show you how to get beautiful, nice, rounded edges. So I just wanted to show you three different point cutters and all three of them go down to a different point and they're all quarter inch radius point cutters. Here is ours, which is the shortest, but I promise you most of these tips are gonna break down right to where we're at. So now let's get this tool set up in your tool database. There are two ways to do this. Way number one is the simplest, just go to CIC Workshop. We already did all the work for you and download our tool database. And this is gonna have all of our tools in it along with the point cutter. Way number two is a little bit more complicated but still pretty simple. So all you really have to do is take the radius of your tool and draw two circles. And then we're gonna get them directly in line with each other. So I go to this alignment tool and get them centered vertically. Then you just get them where they're just touching and that's going to form your base for your tool, as you can see. Now you need the distance between the end of your roundover and the tip of your tool. You can do this with the caliper, but our particular tool is 0.177 inches. Then you take your two circles, group them, and you take a square that's a half inch wide and 0.177 inches tall, and you're going to line them up with the top of that and that is your cutting distance right there. So then I'm going to take this, ungroup it and come in with my cutting tool and now cut that shape. Now whatever your cutting height is on your tool, you can come back here and just connect all of that up like so really quickly and cut that. And there you go. That is your tool. Now to upload it into the database, you need half of it. And so what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna cut this in half, just like this. Now once you cut it in half, you actually do not need this top piece right here. So we're just gonna cut that part of the vector out. And then this is the right side edge of your form tool. So now you go to the tool database. And as you can see, we already have it done, but if you wanna add your own, click add tool, go to the form tool button, and it automatically adjusts if, as long as you have the vector selected. It should roughly be a half inch diameter, two flutes, create your settings, everything's all good in the world, hit apply, okay, and you just created your form tool, which is going to be that. A little tricky, but it works. Now, if you already have point cutter bits, whether it's from me or another company, to check your cutting depth, just simply stick your caliper right here and just jog it down to the tip of that cutting edge and you'll be able to see whatever you know cutting depth you have. So that's just a quick little trick to see if you actually have a quarter inch cutting depth, a 0 0.18, 0 0.19, etc. So if you don't have one from us, use that on your own bit. The first thing we're gonna cut out is that simple rectangle and this is going to show you exactly what not to do. So we're gonna go down a quarter inch because that is the radius of the bit and we're not gonna use that offset and we're gonna look at the results. Then we're gonna do it the right way. 
Now let me show you how to create a toolpath for this point cutter. So we always want to use the profile toolpath on the line and make sure you have your point cutter selected. Now where most people get this wrong is they go down 0.25 inches. And whenever they do that, if we just hit calculate, this is the result they're going to get because they never measured their tool. Now it's showing us this because we have it correctly set up in our tool database, but this is the result you're typically gonna get, which is not good. I'm gonna do two passes on that depth of cut because it is taking off a lot of material. And I personally don't like to run these bits fast because if you run them too fast, then you have to do some sanding. I don't like doing sanding. So I am gonna cut out this rectangle with a profile, but here's a couple points. Notice you do have this lipped edge, and if any of y'all are curious, yes, this is a cutting edge, so you can actually go down further and have more than just a radius. You can actually have that kind of lip profile, which does look good for like framing and, and clocks and stuff like that. I like going slow with these because this finish is flawless on here and requires zero sanding. If I were to speed this up to 100 inches a minute and only do it in one pass, one, it would most likely not fare too well on the bit itself, and if it did survive, it would be very rough. So I like sticking with 45 to 60 inches a minute on this, and it does just fine. Now, I'm gonna get this cut out and show you how that edge looks. Now, I'm gonna put this upcut bit in here to cut out this rectangle, and I just wanna test for you guys to see if that radius edge actually takes away the fuzzies that are gonna come from this upcut, having those chips ejected upwards and having those fuzzies on the top. So what I just made here on this Bamex is exactly what I showed you earlier in the video where you actually leave a little bit of a beveled edge and a little tiny, tiny line right here. Very hard to see on the camera, but it is noticeable and does need a little bit of sanding. Now my particular bit, which I do recommend obviously, because it's our bits, it doesn't have such a massive flat spot where I actually kind of tried to join up these points. And so the radius is slightly off but you don't have a giant line you're constantly worried about, even though it does need a slight, slight offset. So now let's do a little tray and show you my two favorite ways of using this bit and how to use it the right way. So if you're wondering what toolpath order you should run a point cutter with, I have found it really doesn't matter that much. So I'm actually going to do the pocket first, then we'll run this on the inside and the outside, and then we'll cut it out. That way you see it go before the profile, but after the pocket, and so you can kind of see it both directions. The main thing is you want the hold down to be good, because if it is not good, you could get a flawless edge like this on one side, and then that piece start picking up, and you end up getting an edge like this on the other side. So it doesn't matter if it's before or after, just make sure everything is held down. Now let me show you how to correctly program this with a simple tray. And so what I like to do is actually do an offset of let's say 0 0.02 inches. Why 0 0.02? Well, cause it sounds good. And we're gonna do it inwards on the tray and outwards on the outside part. And these are gonna be the two vectors that I'm actually going to do on the line. So I take my profile I select that inside and the outside vector with the 0 0.02 offset. I select on the line and I don't go down 0.25. I actually only go down 0.175, somewhere around there. Always do a ramp as well because it's important. So now instead of this lip right here and a slight lip right there, you actually get a perfectly rounded edge on your product like that. So 
So we have our point cutter in and the material we're using today is called Bamex. It's a tri-layered material that once you cut down 0.15 inches, it's gonna change colors on you. It works really good for trays and so that's why we're doing this tray with it. Now, whenever I start this, I am going down 0.177 inches, but I will pay attention closely because if it goes down just a little bit too much, I'm gonna stop it and raise my Z height up. Sounds kind of crazy, but we have to do this whenever we make like batches of like 100 of these on our industrial CNC's. We'll watch the first couple programs or the first couple tool paths to make sure that, you know, it's not digging in too much because that's a lot more sanding for us on a massive scale and it's a little bit more sanding for you on a small scale, but same difference, nobody likes sanding. Just gonna click go. And remember, it's doing two passes, so I'm gonna let it do that first one and then watch it on the second. So we just popped it off and it is looking fantastic. 0.177 inches deep for my particular CNC bit is the correct depth. For other manufacturers, you're just gonna have to play with it and figure it out on your own. And I don't want this bit to seem intimidating. It is a really fun bit to use. It does things that no other bits can do. And it really does make your products just that next level. So I love the point cutter bit. We use it every day in our manufacturing shop. And here's a side-by-side -side of the correct way to get that radius edge and the incorrect way. Now though, if you do want something like this, just go deeper and you'll get a nice bevel. So let me give you the most important tips regarding point cutters. One, understand that it actually does not come to a point and the pointier it is, the more fragile it is. Most point cutter bits are actually gonna be a little bit dull. The second thing is you do wanna do multiple passes because this is a lot of material it's removing. And so it's okay to do two passes at a slower feed rate, 45 to 60 inches a minute is good. You can go faster if you're feeling a little crazy, but that's what we run them at. And the third thing is that they cannot be used for pocketing or any other tool paths. You're looking at a profile on the line is the tool path that you need to use in order to correctly use that bit. And if you don't feel like creating your own form tool, just download the tool database from cicworkshop.com for that bit. So if you got value from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the quarter inch point cutter roundover from CIC Workshop. And I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. And as always guys, remember, you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.